Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I am going to repair this wall that has been damaged by wallpaper removal. So this is not a severely damaged wall, but it just has lots of little nicks and dings all over the place and the roller lines from wallpaper removal tools. So what we're going to do is just a quick skim coat and I'm going to show you guys a really easy way to do it. So this is the easiest way to skim coat a wall. And we're talking drywall mud here, not plaster. That's a totally different animal, as the guys from Europe know. We don't do plaster over these parts. Just cheap, crumbly drywall mud. So we are going to be applying the mud using a roller. And that's what makes this so do-it-yourself friendly, is because it's a really easy way to apply the mud, which is often the hardest job for people trying to attempt a skim coat. Okay, so I've got my mud in here. I'm gonna mix it up and we'll show you what the consistency should be. Now, some people might think it needs to be like super thin and pourable so that you can pour it into a paint tray and roll it on like paint, but that's not what you want. You actually want it to be kind of stiffer. If the mud is too thin, then it's gonna make it way more likely to get pinhole bubbles as you're applying it and smoothing it out. basically the same thickness that I like to coat with. So it's slumping a little, but it's going to hold its form nicely. Okay, what you're going to need now is you're going to need a paint roller. I'm using a 19 mil, which is also a three quarter mil. And this is just a crusty old one that's been used for exteriors. It's ready to be demoted to drywall mud. Next, you're going to want to have 12 inch knife or a 10 inch whatever you're more comfortable with and a pan or a hawk I prefer a pan for this method and here's how this is gonna work now forgive me guys I haven't done this in a long time because I usually just skim it out with hawk and trowel but this is a really good method for homeowners so let's take a look at this though so this is the hardest part is getting this first saturated with mud and learning how to handle this without making a huge mess so So it's getting close to fully covered. Once it gets fully covered the first couple times, then it works a lot better. But anyway, so as you can see, I've got this covered in mud here and I'm just gonna start rolling here. Yeah, some beautiful textures. We've all seen those in somebody's basement somewhere. Somebody gave up on drywall finishing and decided to give it the old roller texture. Anyways, I'm just trying to give it an even coat and I'm staying about an inch away from the bottom and an inch away from the other corner of the wall. And so again, I dunk this in and it doesn't need to be fully covered. I just need that and be quick about it. And one of the things I love about this is it seems to work out the porosity, like all of the air in the mud seems to just get worked out by pushing it back and forth with the roller. So that's one of my favorite things about this method. Even though I find it kind of messy, I don't like having to have other tools handy. Um, it just seems to be a really nice finish. So I'm trying to stay away from the plug about an inch or so. Actually, I managed to get pretty close. But anyways, there we go. I'm gonna set up the camera back further away, but you guys got a good close up here of what it's looking like. So I actually want to get from floor to ceiling coated. And you can actually, as long as it doesn't start drying out on you, you can get surprisingly far with this method. Like you can do, you know, like four by eight feet pretty easily. Or if you have two people and you get one person running the roller and one person running the knife behind, it can really go fast. And it really does do good results too. So I'm going to do one more spread here. Get the bucket moved. You just want to make sure that it's not drying out on you. 
So that's your limit. How far can you go without it drying out on you? I'm even going to push it and go one more here. This works really well on ceilings too. You can even use it over a light texture. Not an unpainted popcorn, like an acoustic popcorn, because that'll get saturated and then pull off the wall. Okay, so now I've got my nice clean 12 inch knife. So here's what we are going to do. Look at your blade because it's going to have the tips curved up and a bend in it in a certain direction. And you want to make sure that the tips are curved up away from the wall or this is not going to work nicely. So let's take a look at this. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go up into the top and I'm just going to wipe down and grab a bit of mud. And I'm going to go right back up to the top so that I can actually get that last inch that I stayed away from. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Go down to the bottom. And I'm not pushing so hard to take it all off. I'm just trying to flatten the mud out and we'll get a close up in a minute. And in fact, I'm not moving fast enough here. So what I'm doing is I started with my knife kind of pushed that way, and now I'm going this way. In an, that's exaggerated, of course. But I gotta speed up, and then we'll do a small section, and I'll show you, show you guys again. But it's coating really nicely. And don't get too fussed, guys. Really, you just gotta make sure you get over the wall before it starts to skin up, skin over on you. Because you can always touch stuff up. But what you don't want is this stuff all skinning over and becoming a horrible mess. time though but I always like it. I don't know why I don't do it more often. Laziness I guess which doesn't make sense. Okay better keep going here. So you just want to go back into your last run a little bit. A couple inches. And if you notice that it's a lot thicker on one spot and a lot thinner on one spot you can just give it like a quick little dunk and then just spread a bit more of that mud because it's nice to have an even consistency like up top I've got like a half inch of you know maybe like a quarter inch of mud and down at the bottom it's like pretty sparse so the bottom is drying out faster than the top so I'm just going to kind of spread it a little bit further and I think I'm only going to go about three rollers wide on this one so I often start in the middle like that's why it was so thick at the top is because I started in at the top just like rolling paint wherever you start is where you put the most of it so if you want to get an even spread and I should have been doing this but I'm just a little out of practice start in the middle so now by starting in the middle I've got most of the mud in the middle and remember you can just stay a couple inches away because you're gonna pull that mud and put it into the top. So you don't want to be hitting the ceiling or other walls. Let's see if we go one more spread here. And there's a technique to it. Like you kind of gotta be fast. If you're if you're slow and you push too hard on it, what you're gonna do is you're kind of gonna snow plow the mud and you'll have like a roller full of mud fall on the floor, which is super cool. Or if you're doing it from the floor on the ceiling, you might have a roller full of mud fall on your face. Had that happen too. It's super awesome. Okay, check my blade to make sure it's facing the right way. And again, just go up to the ceiling, like so. You're grabbing a little bit of mud from one pass, and you're going up to the ceiling. And remember, angling your pressure so that you're leaving the line on this side, not 
one on this side. I forgot to mention you guys, I'm just using a lightweight all-purpose. And in my opinion, that's the best mud to use, is a lightweight all-purpose. Because it still has enough glue in it to stick to almost any surface, but it also, it smooths out real nice. Whereas if you're using like say a heavyweight all-purpose, it's gluey and sticky and isn't necessarily gonna spread nice in one coat. So the lightweight all-purpose or even better is a finish mud. Just as long as you know it's gonna stick well. Like over almost any just regular painted wall, a finish mud is gonna work really well. Anyways, back to it. I got some lights here. Maybe you guys can actually see what this looks like when I'm feathering it out. Get the rest of this done real quick. Hopefully you guys can see that. Again, I'm going just a couple inches into my work. And you can see it does, it's not an even spread, like it's just, it's all over the place. It's the knife work that makes it nice and smooth. consistency of the mud is thicker like it's not super thin and soupy this is the same thickness that I would do a first coat with so it's actually pretty thick compared to what a lot of people would think you can always go back over your feather line to wet it down a bit but that's looking good Okay, start at the bottom. And worst case scenario, you can come back and touch up around the outlets when it's a little bit drier. So you don't have to fuss too much about those if you guys are struggling with that spot, which is a definite possibility. But you know, I've got a lot of years of experience of messing around, going around outlets. So I make it look pretty easy. But that part can definitely be challenging. Just remember, it's easier to touch stuff up than to mess it up farting around with it. Pull it to the top. And it's always nice when there's something in your mud leaving an awesome line. And if you guys are wondering, if you should do this with a hawk or a trowel instead of the pan and knife. Well, look at it this way. I'm a hawk and trowel guy, and I'm using a pan and knife for this, so that should answer your question. This is an easier tool to use to do this job. So you Americans that haven't heard of a hawk and trowel, you'll be happy about that. Pan and knife is supreme in this case. Now that I'm done, it's a little bit early, but I'm just gonna be touching up some things, because it's, it's a little bit firm. Ideally though, you should wait to touch it up until it's fully dry. So as you guys can see, I was able to leave a really nice finish on here. I mean, it's hard to see anything because well, it's pretty flat. There's a lift off. There's some light lift offs, but overall, yeah, I mean, you just can't see much. We've got just a little bit of the washboard up here, and that's from having the wrong angle and pressure. I was rushing, but I'll be able to sand that out. 
there's a nice like uniform one or two mils of drywall mud on here. No air bubbles. Really happy with it. Anyways, there's nothing to see here, guys. It's flat and smooth. So that is the easiest way to skim coat a wall with drywall mud. I hope you guys got something useful out of this video. It's definitely a super handy tool to have in the arsenal. As you can see, it's fast, it does a really good job, it's user friendly, like super do-it-yourself friendly. Now it might take you two coats to get it perfect, there's going to be a learning curve, but you can get really good results without a lot of drywall experience doing this method. So hopefully you got something out of this video, I hope it helps. Anyways, thanks for watching you guys, it's been another Vancouver Carpenter video? Definitely Vancouver drywall today. Okay, thanks for watching you guys. You just go skim your walls. That's what you came here for. What are you watching for now? Go skim your walls. Before I forget you guys, I'm not gonna do sanding in this video. If you want a video about sanding drywall, I will link it in the description below.